G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now I'm about to share with you three tips to help you manage and navigate your SharePoint document libraries with ease and become more productive so that you can get on with things that are more important than trying to find files. So let's get stuck into it. We can see that I'm in my SharePoint document library. It is very well structured. We've got some custom metadata that we've added. We can see we've got IDs, we've got categories, we've got subcategories, audiences, we've even got owners and approvals and an important next review date. But if this library has got lots and lots and thousands of documents, we really need a way to be able to really quickly find what we're looking for. So one of the ways in which we can do that is through grouping uh, or creating a view and grouping these documents by the metadata or the columns that we have. Now, if we have a look at how we do this, I can go to my category column here and I can say group by category. Now, that's all well and good. And you can see that it is expanded by default. Now, I'll collapse these and you can see while we don't have thousands, just think of a document library that may potentially have thousands of documents in it. But this is only one level. What if we wanted to add more grouping? So like a subgroup underneath our top level. So if I expand this out, maybe we want to go the category and then audience. So if we go and have a look at group by and select group by audience, you'll notice that that changes and audience becomes the top level of our groupings. So we've lost that category grouping. So if I go back to group by category, you can see that we don't get the options to do the sort of multi-level grouping. Now we can achieve this, but we need to do it a little bit differently. So I'm going to create a new view and I'm going to say, uh, let's call this two level groups, okay? So I'll just call that, uh, that view that name. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group by category. All right. So now we've got our top level. I'm going to save this view. Now to get this second level, what I need to do is I need to go and go select edit current view. Now, if I scroll down and we're taken to a, a, a classic page, but if I scroll down here, you can see I've got this option where it says grouped by. You can see the first group by uh, column category and then group by a second category. So let's go audience. And you'll also see that we can, by default, we can collapse our view. So I'm going to click OK. So now I'm taken back to the library at the default uh, view of all documents. But now I've got a two level group uh, view and you can see that it's collapsed by default. Now, if I go into say cybersecurity, you can see now we've got a second level of grouping. And if I expand this, you can see that I've now got that option. So it's like a tree structure. I've got two levels deep. All right, so that's a nice user experience to be able to, to have the flexibility of grouping by two columns, okay? Now, another interesting point here, uh, and this from a user experience point of view, is something that's really beneficial and uh, worth highlighting. Now, a lot of times uh, users don't like setting metadata, right? But because we've got this view, if I drag and drop some uh, files, and you'll notice when I select some files here, I'm just gonna drag to uh, this first file over the top of cybersecurity and then admin staff. So I've got two levels of grouping that's uploading, right? So you can see that that has now uploaded. The category of cybersecurity has now changed to nine documents, which is interesting in the first point, because what that means is that it's already been uh, tagged with cybersecurity. So if I go down to cybersecurity, you'll also see that I've now got four documents in the audience of admin staff. So if I expand this, you can see that these two columns here, category and audience, have automatically been set for me because I dragged and dropped the document over that view. Just to test this out again, if I go up to the advice process, I'll drag another document over here. I'll pop that on top of the audience uh, of compliance team. I've got now two in the advice process and I've got now two in the compliance team. And there's my document. Uh, well, if I refresh this, you'll see that we'll have 
If I expand this and I expand this, you can see I've now got two documents and that, that metadata has been set. Now, if I did this on the top level, so advice process only, the advice process will change to three, but you'll now see I've got an unassigned uh, grouping there. So that document has been un uh, hasn't been assigned. All right. So there's two ways by I mean by grouping two levels deep, we've now got a really nice user experience of our document library. We've collapsed it by default as well. And then when you drag and drop documents onto the headings, then it automatically sets the metadata for those particular columns. Now, I mentioned off the top that we had a next review date column as well. So we've, I'll just, I've just changed back to all documents. Now I've got a next review date. Now, a common, um, a common requirement and a common thing that people need to know about, especially if you're the owner of this document, that we might wanna get notified a certain amount of time before that review date to give us a bit, a bit of time to jump in, have a look and make sure everything is okay. Now, one of the ways, normally we, we may have gone and had to create a, a, a some type of complex workflow or something like that. Now what we can do is we can jump up to the uh, up to the automate menu and I can go to rules. I can create a rule here. Now you can see that we've got a number, we've got four out of the box rules that we can create. A file or metadata is modified, when a new file is added, when a file is deleted, and when a date approaches. So I might wanna say, notify me 30 days before the next review date. Well, I wanna set this to the owner. Right, so I want to say 30 days prior to the review date of any document in here, automatically send an email to the owner and I'll hit create. Now, all of a sudden, I've got this business process that now uh, sends an email to the owner of that document 30 days before that review date, just to remind them that this document is coming up for review. All right, so there we go. Three tips for you creating view, my multi layer view by grouping uh, by two columns, automatically setting metadata by dragging and dropping onto the headings of those views and those groupings, and then also a couple of clicks and you've got a business process to notify the document owner when documents are coming up for review. So I hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.